we continue reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, Chapter 4, Text 21 to 22. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Mora putra, mora saka, mora pranapati, e bave more, kare shuddha bhakti. Apna ke bara mane, amare samahina, se bave hai ame tahar adina. If one cherishes pure loving devotion to me, thinking of me as his son, his friend, or his beloved, regarding himself as great, and considering me his equal or inferior, I become subordinate to him. So in this section of Chaitanya Charitamrita, we are hearing the internal reason for Krishna to come as Lord Chaitanya. Because we have been hearing that he's saying that Braj Prem is what attracts him, what controls him. So he's saying, if one cherishes pure loving devotion to me, thinking of me as his son, his friend, or his beloved, regarding himself as great and considering me his equal or inferior, I become subordinate to him. So what's the big deal? From today on, I will consider, okay, Krishna is my son. You know, I'll behave with him like that. See, that's okay. But it has to come with love and pure devotion. It's not on a mental platform. It's not that mentally. But uh, if we want to attract Krishna, that we have to revive that natural love that we have. So it's better that we try to revive the natural love instead of artificially claim that we are already in that position of love. Then at least we have a chance of truly reviving our love and being situated in our loving relationship with Krishna. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, three kinds of devotional service are described, namely bhakti, ordinary devotional service, shuddha bhakti, pure devotional service, and vidha bhakti, mixed devotional service. So, bhakti, ordinary devotional service. Shuddha bhakti, pure devotional service. And vidha bhakti, mixed devotional service. Now, let's see what is saying. When devotional service is executed with some material purpose, involving fluidive activities, mental speculations, or mystic yoga, it is called mixed or adulterated devotional service. So, what does it mean? That... I am doing bhakti, but I want some material, maybe some name, fame, worship, adoration, you know, or I, I want some opulence, some good position. I want some control or some enjoyment like that. So I'm doing bhakti for that purpose. Or if I'm doing bhakti so that I can um, merge into the Supreme Brahman after I give up this body. Or if I'm doing bhakti, uh, the, because I want to get some siddhi, siddhis, you know, the mystic yogis get some siddhi. We keep saying the, the, the shastra say there's eight kinds of siddhi. So then that is adulterated, mixed. That's bhakti, but it's mixed. Besides bhakti yoga, the Bhagavad Gita also describes karma yoga, gyan yoga, and dhyan yoga. Yoga means linking with the Supreme, which is possible only through devotion. Yoga means the, the meaning of the word yoga. Yoga, we say, right? Yoga means to link to the Supreme. And how do we link with him? Through karma, then it's called karma yoga. Karma yoga means, okay, I will, I will do whatever activities I like to do. And I will offer the result to Krishna, to the Supreme Lord. Then Gyan Yoga. What is Gyan Yoga? I will try to get knowledge of the Supreme Lord. And Dhyan Yoga. I will try to, the, to reach the Supreme Lord through the meditation process. So fruitive activities ending in devotional service, philosophical speculation ending in devotional service, and the practicism of mysticism ending in devotional service 
are known respectively as karma yoga, gyan yoga, and dhyan yoga. But such devotional service is adulterated by the three kinds of material activities. So why it's called mixed? Because the desire, so bhakti is being done, but there's also some personal desire, personal desire to have some, some opulence, as we just said, you know, some opulence or some mystic yoga or some knowledge, the philosophical speculation. For those grossly engaged in identifying the body as the self, pious activity or karma yoga is recommended. <clears throat> so, uh, we, when we are just thinking we are the body, we are the body and I have to work, I have to work. So then what is recommended? Yes, you work. Don't give up your work. We should never renounce our work prematurely out of frustration or out of, you know, many times we are so frustrated. We say, okay, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm going to become a renunciate. But that is not a proper way. So do the work, but offer the result to Krishna. Connect that work to Krishna. For those who identify the mind with the self, philosophical speculation or jnana yoga is recommended. So, you know, the thinkers, the jnanis, the, the philosophers, they, they are with the mind. So then jnana yoga, that, okay, yes, very good. You have that capability, that idea of, engaging the mind, then engage it for the servant to link it to Krishna. Through the mind, the, through, the proper, through the proper inquiry method, reach to the Supreme Lord. But devotees standing on the spiritual platform have no need of such material conceptions of adulterated devotion. Adulterated devotion does not directly aim for love of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, service performed strictly in conformity with the revealed scriptures is better than such Vida Bhakti because it is free from all kinds of material contamination. It is executed in Krishna consciousness solely to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here, because the desire is, I want to do this, and so this is how I'm going to do Bhakti, that's why it's called mixed devotional service. But the pure devotees, what is their desire? How can I please Krishna? Their desire is whatever I do, whatever I speak, or whatever I think, how can I please Krishna? That is what they, that's why it is said on the spiritual platform. Okay. Now, so what are we, what are we advised? What are we advised? That perform the the devotional service, which according to rules and regulations, because right now we do not have that. We have not yet revived our love for Krishna, right? We are, we are in the process. The process takes a little time. So how to revive? <clears throat> how to revive? Follow the rules and regulations of the Bhakti Shastras, how it is said, hear and chant, worship the deity, read Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, associate with the devotees. That's what is given. Why? because that's what's pleasing to Krishna. So right now at our level, we may have so many desires, so many desires. We can't pretend and say, oh, I have no desire at all, but uh, uh, no material desire. We might have so many, but just follow the process. By following the process, we are pleasing Krishna. Now, now there is for those who are spontaneously devoted to the Lord, have no aims for material gain are called attracted devotees. They are spontaneously attracted to the service of the Lord and they follow in the footsteps of self-realized souls. So what is this spontaneous? That they can't stop chanting the Lord's names. They can't stop hearing about the Lord. They can't stop uh, pleasing the Lord. You know, for our, I can speak for myself. I have to force myself, okay, now it's time to chant. Oh, no, but I have so many things to do. No, I better finish it. I've taken up this uh, process. I have to finish chanting. But when spontaneous, they cannot stop chanting. That's the only thing they want to do. They cannot stop pleasing. That is the spontaneous. 
and they are following the footsteps of self-realized souls. So the pure devotees, the pure devotees, their pure devotion should the bhakti manifested from pure love of Godhead surpasses the regulative principles of the authoritative scriptures. Now, why do they have this spontaneous attraction? Because of their love, their love for Krishna. The love for Krishna is so much that they might not be able to follow the principles which are there in the scriptures. Because they, they're so much in love with Krishna. Sometimes loving ecstasy transcends regulative principles. Such, such ecstasy, however, is completely on the spiritual platform and cannot be imitated. So we are getting a glimpse. We are getting a glimpse into how does the uh, Raga Bhaktas act? They have that spontaneous attraction. We can't imitate it. You know, if we imitate it, we are just going to be called um, like really not even doing any good for ourselves and not for others because that creates havoc. It, it uh, shakes other people's faith also, and we will still remain in the material world. So, and we, have not re we will not be able to revive our loving relationship with Krishna. So the regulative principles help ordinary devotees rise to the stage of perfect love of Godhead. Pure love of Krishna is the perfection of pure devotion, and pure devotional service is identical with spontaneous devotional service. So what do we have to do? Follow the regulative principles because it will give us love for Krishna. That's the reason we are doing this bhakti. Why are we hearing and chanting? Why? Hearing Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, chanting the holy name, why? To revive our love for Krishna. That's the reason. Then pure love for Krishna is the perfection of pure devotion. That's the goal to revive our love for Krishna. And once we have that, then we are on the spontaneous platform because everything is coming because of love then. Not that, oh, I have to chant Krishna's names because that's the process and I have to follow it. So we can see bhakti is the process and the goal. It's like a mango which is green when it's unripe and that same mango when it is ripe becomes golden and nectarian and juicy. So by bhakti is the same, the process and the goal. No other process is like that. The process of jnana is to merge into the Brahman. The process of yoga is to uh, realize the super soul or to get mystic yoga. But it's bhakti that Whatever stage we start, we have full material desire, no material desire. We just continue doing bhakti and we will uh, get love of God. And in that position, also we continue doing bhakti out of love. Flawless execution of regulative principles is exhibited in the Vaikuntha planets. By strictly executing these principles, one can be elevated to the Vaikuntha planets. But Spontaneous pure loving service is found in Krishna Loka alone. So what is said in the scriptures is that by following the rules and regulations, there are rules and regulations of how to perform bhakti, vedi bhakti, and that will bring us to Vaikuntha. The spiritual world is called Vaikuntha. The spiritual world has so many planets, so many spiritual planets are there. And they are called the Vaikuntha Loka. And by strictly following these regulations, we will reach up to Vaikuntha. But it will not bring us to Golok Vrindavan. Because in Golok Vrindavan, everyone has this spontaneous, that Braj Prem, that spontaneous, pure loving service is there only in uh, Golok Vrindavan. And to give us this Braj Prem, Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya. And how? He said, chant the Hare Krishna mantra and you can get it. He said, just chant the Hare Krishna mantra. You can reach up to Golok Vrindavan, which is so difficult for anyone to reach. 
and be situated in that pure love, loving relationship, personal relationship with Krishna. So any comments or questions? If no, then we'll stop here for today. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki, Jai Shla Prabhupada ki, Jai Gaur Premnande, Hari Bol, Hari.